the Joe Rogan experience. Now, did you run into any issues where you really didn't have any vegetables other than the, the vegetables in the stomachs of the animals you ate? You were just eating meat. Did you run into any health issues just living off of meat? I've eaten a very high protein, high fat diet for long periods of time. And I think that there's a lot more to food than nutrition. The reason I was eating that way had nothing to do with me thinking that it was the best diet. The reason I was eating that way is because I just wanted to live as close to that environment as possible. And that's what was available. Right. So I know some people are thinking, well, this is a really healthy diet. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But that wasn't my motivation. Did but you what feel I, healthy what I when you had a good amount of it? What I felt was that if I ate too much meat, it had bad effects. What kind of bad I effects? Believe, I believe my body started to feel weird. I believe that <laughs> you can only handle so much protein, but you can handle a lot of fat. What I found is I had to eat most of my calories from fat. I would eat a half a pound of solid pure fat a day when I was eating just meat and fat. I might eat two or three, even four pounds of meat a day, but but like a half a pound of it was pure fat. And what, where, what was the form of it? Was it bear fat or where are you getting your fat from? It would be moose fat. It would be sheep fat. Some, one year it was bear fat. Their fat is weird, um, right? Because it's a different- it's Caribou like fat. Chewy fat, like a deer fat. It's a- it's not chewy, but you know what I'm saying. It's like it's not like like it doesn't render down like a uh, beef fat would. Moose fat, yeah. Oh sure, does you it? render you can render it if you want. I, I rendered a lot. of It's it. a different like the way you look at it on the animal. It just seems different. What's different about it is that those game animals do not put on fat within the muscle. Right, it's separate. Right. If you get a fat moose, he'll have a big fat layer on his back. And so you would render that fat? or Sure. How you, that's how you do it? I mean, I'll eat it all the way. I, when I'm butchering the moose in the field, I start eating the fat right there. Really? Sure. Wow. Grab it off the kidneys and stuff and start eating it. It's so great. that was the key for you was to get enough fat? I had to eat a lot of fat, and then um, I would feel better. If if you're just eating protein, for me, it didn't work. Like, like what? What? How did it make you feel? It made me feel like I had drink an awful lot of water. Whenever you had, I, like you had to drink an awful lot of water? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd drink a lot of water or I'd feel kind of like just a weird feeling inside. I mean, I, I also, you know, I was working really hard physically at those times, but I was definitely drinking more than a gallon of water a day, sometimes almost two gallons of water a day when I'd be like in real cold weather, climbing mountains and everything, eating meat and fat all the time. Mm. Yeah. I'd be drinking a lot of water. And the other thing that was really important to me, um, like when I hear people talking about how they eat a high meat diet or ketogenic diet now and they're just eating um, beef, mm -hmm. I wonder, you know, what they're doing for variety. Because for me, I was eating all the different parts of the animal, all the different organs and things. And also, oh. a lot of it I'd eat raw or half-dried, for example, was one of my favorite ways to eat caribou meat when I was eating you know, this meat fat diet. Now I eat more vegetables and fruits and, and I still like to eat a lot of meat, but I do eat more vegetables and fruits. You feel better that way? Personally, yeah. I like more, I like variety. I like a mix. I mean, I felt good when I was eating that stuff, but like I say, I would eat, I, I would not feel good if I was just eating steaks every day. Right. If I was just eating steaks every day, I would, I would feel strange. But if I took a caribou backstrap and I just sliced it up thin and hung it over the wood stove, and left it there for half a day or something. It would get a little, you know, dry on the outside, but it would still be raw inside. That stuff was delicious. That'd be like candy for me. I'd just pig out, and I love that. And what would you do with the crust? Eat it. Oh, just you mean outside. you mean the crust on big pieces that have been yeah. hanging around all winter? Yeah. That gets turned into bait. That gets fed to the animals. Oh, okay. If it's... Did you ever try to eat that? The only crust that... Because um, that's where the oxidized blood is, basically. Yeah. It turns really dark. Mm -hmm. It'll get almost black. Um, sometimes there'll be, for some reason, like down around the shank on, on a big animal like a moose, when you're cutting it up into smaller pieces, the crust looks so clean and everything down there, you can eat it like dry meat. But most of the crust on most of the big sections of meat get black and they get, I, I would not consider that food. It gets like, it's it's not... The same as dry meat that you take 
a fresh piece of meat and dry it for a few days. This is coming from a guy who ate the contents of animal stomachs, so I'll, I trust you. When you, <laughs> when <laughs> Try you it say, sometime. When you say it's not meat, it's not food, don't eat it. Not that, not that black you. crust. That, no. It's just yeah. blo- it's oxidized yeah. blood. Yeah. Blood's yeah. good, but you want your blood real fresh. Right. Yeah. Like, that's the thing with blood is, like, a lot of times I haven't even been able to eat the blood from an animal because I'm just too busy. But that's the thing is that you can eat the stomach, you, you can eat the intestine, you can eat the colon. I've eaten the colon of a moose. You can eat the lungs even. You can eat spleen. I've eaten all this stuff. But the truth is, if you're one guy working alone butchering a moose, you have a hard time getting all that stuff preserved and prepared, you know? Yeah. Because, it like, if you want to eat the colon, you want to get the shit out of it fast before it gets hard. Like it, oh, it, boy. <laughs> what does the colon of a moose taste like? Oh, like oh, the colon of a donkey? No, it's great because, <laughs> well, when you do it right, all it is is fat. It's just, it's like donuts. It's like fat donut. You slice it. What you do, if you want to eat the colon of moose, old guy that was married to an Eskimo told me this, and it works. You, um, you got to work fast. When you, when you take the colon out of your next elk, try this out, Joe. Okay. Turn it inside out. The poop off like falls a sock. out. Turn it inside out like a sock. Okay. You got the outside, you got the inside out, it's all smooth. Right. You know how the outside of the colon or the large intestine is full of fat, like mm-hmm. on any animal. You know, there's all this fat all over it. That's going to be on the inside. Now, you just wash that, you know, take it home and wash it good. Get, get the lining all nice and clean. And then you slice it like donuts and fry it up. What it tastes like? Delicious. Is there anything that resembles that would resonate with people? Fat. It's, it's like Just good fat. moose fat. Wow. I mean, there's all different kinds of fat. I have a hard time describing exact taste. I mean, what does it taste? People always ask me that. Well, you might taste be- Tastes like a moose colon. Yeah. I'm saying there might be four other people that know what that tastes like. Oh, no. No. You go up, go up in uh, some village in northern Alaska and you talk a lot to of people? old people. You know, you find old people that eat stuff like that have grown up, you know, 70, 80-year-old native people. 